Sara Barami remembered. Some people's lives are unhappy, and it can be said that these people have great bad luck. Often it is because they are born in the wrong country. Zara Barami was executed on January the 29th, 2011. She has turned out to be an enigmatic figure, a Dutch national, or maybe she had Dutch nationality. She is a person who had genuine bad luck. She was married when she was 16, a fate which befalls women in many parts of the world. She had two daughters by this marriage, but this marriage ended badly. Then she married again, and by this marriage had a son. This marriage didn't work out. It seems the husband of this marriage used to beat her for no good reason. Such is the fate of women in many parts of the world. She had a son by this marriage. In the early 90s she went to the Netherlands with her son and they were granted political asylum. Her eldest daughter committed suicide. She managed to visit around to visit her daughter's grave and meet her younger daughter. Her youngest daughter visited her in Holland but was not allowed to stay. She was not granted refugee status apparently because she had been brought up in her family. It is somehow redolent of the current case of Mara Manuel. There is the present case of Mara Manuel being sent back to Angola because he is now of age. He had been living in the Netherlands since he was 10. Zara's daughter, Banafshe Najekpour, had to return to Iran. Residence was refused because she had been brought up by her husband's family, so there was no question of reunion. The Dutch are a caring and compassionate people, but the government of the Netherlands does sometimes dump on refugees. Zara spent a year in prison in Holland on charges of drug smuggling and forging passports. People have told me that the drugs were planted on her and that in fact she never took drugs herself and didn't even smoke cigarettes. But nobody seems to know why she was carrying counterfeit passports. After spending a year in a Dutch prison, she was never quite the same person and had to have counselling for depression. Goodness knows what being in an Iranian prison did for her. By the time of the fateful visit to Iran to visit her mother and her daughter, Zara was in fact living somewhere in London, but exactly where is a bit of a mystery. She was picked up in December 2000. And nine in Tehran after taking part in the demonstrations against the rigged, or at least widely believed rigged, widely believed to be rigged elections, which saw Ahmadinejad retain, retain power. If power is the right word for someone who, in effect, is a puppet of the supreme leader, she made an impassioned declaration to a radio station, which can be found on YouTube. It seems that much of the time she was kept in solitary confinement and probably tortured. It seems that most prisoners in Iran are. As in most, if not all countries, prisoners are treated as lesser beings, as dogs, in fact worse than dogs. Dogs are normally loved and cherished. Prisoners are normally reviled, even if they are innocent. And those who befriend them are looked down upon. After the, the authorities discovered that Zara had a drugs conviction in Holland, they conveniently, for them, found drugs secreted in Zara's flat, or so they said. Those who knew Zara say she never took drugs, and the drugs thing is a bit of a mystery. Her mother was quoted as saying she couldn't understand how the drugs happened to be there. But there is a suggestion, well it is more than a suggestion, it's an assertion by someone on the comment section on YouTube that he or she knew her when she was living in London and that she was a drug dealer. But this person may, for all we know, be an agent of the Iranian government spreading lies about her. Zara converted from Islam. She considers herself a Hindu. They, the Iranian authorities, can't have known that. She was studying Indian classical music at the Rotterdam Conservatory. She was a vegetarian. Goodness knows what food she was given in Evin prison. Not that that would have bothered the prison authorities. I didn't ever meet her, but I feel that I knew her. I first heard about her when I read about her on the internet, and I was asked if I could find someone who knew her. 
It was somehow hard to believe that they would go ahead and kill her, but they did. They hanged her early in the morning of January the 29th. Death is so final. When a state executes its citizens, it is dragging itself down to the level of the criminal. In this case, there was only one criminal, the state of Iran. All Zara was guilty of, in effect, was taking part in a demonstration and of changing her nationality. After she was killed, all hell broke out in the Netherlands because being a Dutch citizen, she became a cause celeb and because the government had done so little and, had, and had reproached the authorities so submissively. The Iranian authorities had refused consular access to her on the grounds that they did not recognise her Dutch citizenship. They do not allow that anyone could change nationality from Iranian to something else. But by that time it was all too late. The deed had been done. The regime had got away with it, as they have with hundreds of, of other as they have hundreds of other times this year alone. More than 200 people have been executed this year alone and it is said several hundred more have been secretly executed. I am her voice, I am his voice is a campaign on behalf of all political prisoners in Iran. There are hundreds of them. Personalised cards are sent to the authorities on behalf of individual prisoners who become a symbol for all the others, the unheard but not forgotten. I am the voice of Zara Barami.